through much of the group. That seems natural to us, but generating ideas and sharing technologies is one scientific definition of culture. For Whiten, culture includes the human arts, from beer to Beethoven, but it also covers the rudimentary traditions of ape societies. Whiten is trying to discover what kind of mind can lead an ape to culture. Young watch their parents, sometimes very intently, and over the following months and years, they, they acquire that behavior. So you have to be able to copy. To prove that one ape can copy another, a student of Andrew Whiten's devised an experiment. At the University of Texas, Antoine Spiteri has built a kind of slot machine for apes. He loads it with a grape. To get the fruit, a chimp must first turn a disc to allow the grape to drop through a hole. Next, a chimp must move a door that opens a handle to release the fruit payout. Spiteri now trains a chimp named Judy how to work the device. On her own, she would never work it out. But thanks to a sweet liquid reward, she learns the sequence's two steps. Rotate, then push. Next, Judy's group mates enter. Spiteri wants to know if, just by watching, the spectators will learn the technique. Can these apes ape to win this food-finding game? One chimp seems to think she's got it and shoves Judy aside. A minute ago, Judy was the only one with the knowledge. Now, another has it, and quickly the trick spreads throughout the group. But for Spiteri, the most important question remains. Have the next door neighbors also learned the solution? They have no social ties to the original group. In fact, they are hostile towards them. Will they set that aside to keep up with the Joneses next door? In no time at all, they're working the slot machine like old pros. Rotating, then pushing the hand. Learning by imitation is an essential skill for culture. And culture, along with the complex thoughts and emotions behind it, was long believed to be uniquely human. The history of Western thought has always been premised on the idea that they're beasts and they're humans. And humans uh, are touched by the spark of God and beasts are just beasts. Something of a revolution came in 1960 when a young researcher with support from the National Geographic Society set up camp in Tanzania. Jane Goodall observed that chimp emotions seem much like our own, especially the tenacious bond between mother and baby. At a site in Western Africa, Japanese researchers reported the story of an ill two-year-old chimp. Her mother touches her forehead as if to check for a fever. As the baby's strength ebbs, her mother remains devoted. When I see the scene of the mother looking at the baby, I really recognize the emotional life of chimpanzees are so similar to us. For weeks after the baby's death, the mother carries her baby's body. Is the mother grieving? Can an ape be in denial? It is impossible to say exactly what the mother is thinking but hard to dismiss her feelings.
Putting ape emotions on the map was just one of Goodall's accomplishments. She also found powerful evidence of their intelligence. Goodall was the first to report chimps making and using tools. In this case, to fish for termites. When she found termite fishing, people were so surprised and thought we should change the definition of humans or we should include chimpanzees as humans. What Goodall couldn't have known was that at a place called Gualugo, other chimps had an even more sophisticated way to catch termites. First, they use a big stick like a shovel to open the ground. Then they switch to a slender probe to pull up the insects. Perhaps Goodall's most astonishing discovery was that chimps are hunters. She watched a troop catching colobus monkeys by hand. Although no one has established that they coordinate their efforts, the chimps appear to be cooperating. And cooperation is, after all, one of the key drivers of human culture. Could apes speed up their culture by working together? Imagine a group of chimps armed and dangerous, hunting as a band. Why isn't the Earth the planet of the apes? Do apes even have the capacity to cooperate? A series of new studies reveals the rudiments of teamwork in the great apes. But they still come up short. In an experiment at the Great Ape Research Institute in Japan, a chimp knows that food is hidden under a stone. Researchers replace it with a heavier stone. If two chimps each know about the food, can they work together? In repeated trials, no pair of chimps has ever cooperated to synchronize their pulling. If one chimp is replaced with a person, the other animal still doesn't collaborate, at first. But eventually, it figures out the sweet rewards of cooperation. Ultimately, the chimp learns to ask for a helping hand. A needy chimp may well recruit help from a human, but will it ever offer assistance? One of the most surprising findings uh, of all of my years of studying apes has been that they actually will help humans. If you're reaching for an out-of-reach object, if they understand what your goal is, then they will help you. Of course, if you dropped your banana, you can forget it you won't be getting it back. Chimps can understand what someone else wants. One study shows that they can even interpret another's actions as good or bad. In Leipzig, Germany, a chimpanzee is about to receive a tray of food. At the same time, he's given a rope under the platform. He can pull at any time to collapse the platform and end the experiment. Another chimp now enters the cage. 